Good evening. How are you guys? How are you doing this lovely, snowy, Warsaw Valentine's night? Okay, my name is Sam Cook. I'm the founder of James Cook Media, and this is a series of talks that we give here at Google Campus. Now, James Cook Media is a marketing agency that uh, does marketing services, but also teaches business owners. <laughs> James Cook Media is a marketing agency based here in Warsaw, Poland that does international marketing for companies from mainly Europe, but we have clients from all over the world. And what we have the privilege of doing, because we help clients put together their stories and their talks, is, is watch them here deliver content that they're going to be producing and distributing around the world. And the talk that I'm going to introduce tonight actually is a long time coming for me because as a business owner that teaches marketing, there's, there's really two sides to business. There's innovation, which is your product, delivery of a service that solves people's problems, and then there's the marketing. Those are the only two things, according to P Peter Drucker, the famous management consultant, that count in business. Everything else is just costs. If you can't deliver something that solves a problem, innovation, your product, and you can't sell that product, market it, then you don't have a business. It's nice. My specialty is the marketing side. We do story-based, video-based digital marketing. We're very good at it. And because of that specialty, we were able to grow our agency, our marketing agency, from just me 24 months ago to over 20 people, uh, including the camera crew in the back. And because of that growth, that creates a lot of problems. And that creates problems in staffing, that creates problems in efficiency, it creates problems in time management, systems, my time. In fact, I've got night shift tonight after this, I have to do some work. And this is something that I need, but because I'm so busy, I don't have time for, uh, which is Peter's uh, type of work. And what Peter's going to be talking about is how to make your business work for you uh, instead of your business working on you. <laughs> you being a slave to your business is what most of you are here for, I'm assuming, if you read the title. And you may not be as advanced in your business as I am, which is great, because you could potentially avoid a lot of the problems that I created by growing without some of the systems and, and the mindset and the attitude towards business that Peter's going to teach you tonight. So just a personal note on Peter. Why should you listen to him while you're here? So I've been observing a lot of coaching students in my marketing group, and... Every week, I ask them to do one thing. I ask them to do one thing and improve that one thing in their marketing and come back and report to me. Most of them struggle to do one thing every week to improve their business. And they pay me a lot of money to do that. They pay me 15,000 euros a year for weekly coaching. And they struggle to actually do that one thing every week. Peter every week shows up and has not only done the one thing that he told me he's going to do, but he's done about 15 other things. And as I'm watching him every week, I'm thinking, how does he do this? How does he produce so much every week? Uh, and I'm actually very curious. Uh, and at the end of the talk, he's going to talk a little bit more about three days of training that he's going to be delivering here in Warsaw starting tomorrow. And I'm very curious, because I'm attending that training, how he's delivering that. So much so that I'm taking three days that I don't have in my schedule. And precisely because I don't have three days is exactly why I need to take three days to invest in what he's about to teach you, which is how to stop being a slave for your business and start living the great life that you want. So without further ado, I would like to present to you Peter Wutz, who's going to be presenting Creating Business Leverage for Your Life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, man. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. 
And thank you for taking time this evening, this special evening, the 14th of February, Valentine's Day. But you showed one important thing, that's commitment. And maybe that's it. Very important to build a business that will support your life. But let's start December 2015. This is Eva, a client of me. She's an interior architect. We were working together on a project, a 3D visualization from a new to build uh, project. She was in my office a few times a week, and she was like, oh, headaches a few days. And I said, hey, maybe you need to go to a doctor because this is not normal. Yeah, I took all the pain care as possible, still not going away, this headache. It was Wednesday afternoon. Friday, she had an appointment with a doctor. On Monday, she had an appointment with an emergency appointment with a brain surgery. Next Friday, she had a part removed from her skull because there was a growth inside her skull. Now, sad story in this sense, well, she had only a few days to prepare. She could call some clients to say, hey, I'm sorry, project will be delivered a bit later. But on Friday, she had the surgery. Part was taken out, replaced with a metal plate. And we could say it was a good end of the story in that sense. With removing the part, everything was fixed. No further treatment. No chemo, no radiation stuff. So on itself, of course, it's not nice to hear that a part of your skull is removed. But besides that, everything was fine. Well, one other thing, she had to rest for six weeks. So my question for you tonight is, what would you do? Let's say you get a call now, and they say you have to depart tomorrow at 7 to a destination you may choose. You may go where you want. It can be a tropical island, five-star hotel, all in, everything you want. Who's in? Who wants to go? Yay, cool. Good news is you can even bring whatever you want. You bring along who you want. So it's not we're going to put you on a deserted island with no food, that kind of stuff. No, no, no. You can go where you want, you bring what you want, whatever you want. Who's still in? Hey, cool. Now, of course, there will be a part bad news as it goes. The bad news is you cannot take work. No laptop to work on. No phone to call on. Because if you do that, you will go straight to hell. There is a lot of, another part, bad news. You have to go for six months. Who is still in? Okay, cool. <laughs> Sorry? No? Okay, cool. But, okay. So, you have to depart tomorrow. For six months, you may not work. Yeah? No work, eh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the question then is, what will be left of your business after six months if you return? Who will say everything will be fine? Nobody? Okay. Who will say, well, I'm afraid the business will be dead. Okay. Really, Sam? <laughs> Who will say, yeah, maybe we can reanimate it a bit and we will survive? Okay, cool. This talk has three parts. The first one is, how did we become actually a slave of our business? Second part is where we got it wrong. The third part is how we're going to fix it, because that's what we 
eventually want to do. And at the end, there is a Q&A. I'm very happy to answer all your questions. So the main thing I want to give you tonight is how to create a sustainable business. Very important, sustainable business. To generate real value for your clients and in return also for yourself. So you can, in the end, leverage your life so you can be free again. That's the main thing of this talk. Now, what is important? It's all about awareness. Now, there are many definitions. What is awareness? Well, knowing that I'm here on a stage in front of people means I'm aware. But you can also use it to describe other stuff. Awareness is be able to connect the dots. Means you have certain information, you have certain knowledge, but what do you need to do to find a solution? That is connecting dots. Raising your level of awareness is seeing things you didn't see before. And I'm not talking about ghosts anyway, but seeing stuff you didn't see before or solutions you didn't see before. Something else, it's all about focus. Who wants more focus? Okay, cool. Who's in for a little exercise? Yeah, okay, cool. Wait, we're gonna do that later. Now, many people ask me, my high-end coaching clients or people on my Facebook, I want more client, uh, more, I want more focus. How can I do that? Well, the problem is you cannot do that. There is another problem. Mainly, your focus is probably somewhere it doesn't have to be. Who has something like this? I guess this is a big problem for your focus. Well, I can run my business from that, from this device, that's nice. But on the other hand, for many people, it's a big distraction. So if you want more focus, it actually means your focus is somewhere doesn't, uh, doesn't have to be. This is your work you have to do. But here is your phone or something else or Facebook or whatever. So if you want more focus, what do you have to do is just make sure you take the focus and move it to the work. Okay, that's maybe not as much fun, but today, how many hours can you actually work focused? For many people, we don't reach one hour anymore. So if you agree to do an exercise, I would say, take your phone. Oh, now it's going to be scary. <laughs> and there is a little button on that. Great. Do yourself the favor. If you want more focus in your life, turn the fucking phone off. Yeah, that's cheating, but okay. <laughs> I should have thought you have to bring paper. That's true. <laughs> but that's, this is the truth. It's all about focus. If you want to do more high-level work, produce a lot, Sam, yeah, means you have to have focus. Now, there's another thing which is a problem today. Unfortunately, it also has to do with this, this thing, meaning we live in an instant gratification world. What does it mean? Well, if you're hungry, a few pushes on a button, and in 30 minutes from now, there is food. Well, it will not be 30 minutes now, but one hour, 30 minutes before the pizza is here, but I mean, hungry, 30 minutes, and you have food on your doorstep. You want new clothes, tomorrow morning, it's delivered. Even today, you have six-hour service kind of delivery. You want to go on a trip? Tomorrow you can on a plane. But for a few things in life, there is no button. Get it now. 
like success in life. Well, some people try to sell that, as you maybe find out, but it doesn't work. <laughs> so it doesn't work for success. Sorry, it doesn't work for success. It doesn't work for money. It doesn't work for love. It doesn't work for friendship, and that kind of stuff. So I would say there is no shortcut to success. Well, maybe there is, but not the one button buy now or eh, get it now. So it's important to know that if you really want to build a business that will support your life, it will take some work and time to do. I'm not here to say it is no work and it will not take time. Oh, here we are again. Who likes to travel? Yay! Hey, yeah, everybody now. Cool. Now, if we gonna travel, in most cases we take a plane. So I would say welcome to no destination airlines. So just imagine you just boarded the plane, you're sitting down, buckling up, the crew will do some announcements, and after that, most of the time, the captain will say some words. Just imagine. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome on this Airbus 320, destinated to no destination. Thank you for choosing no destination airlines. I'm Captain Hans. I have no license. So, well, we're just fueled up. We have 12 hours of fuel, but I have no clue where we will go to. Anyway, what can happen? Well, maybe we run out of fuel and we're just going to crash. Maybe we fly into a mountain. Then we will burn. But we will see what happens. So sit back, so sit back and relax. Enjoy the flight. Who will stay on board? Yeah? Okay. Cool. I don't know. Because... I would say, time to take the exit route. But unfortunately, many people in their lives and their businesses run it without setting any destination. It means they actually have no plan for their life. They have actually no plan for their business. So, one of the most important things we have to do, maybe, if we want to build a successful business and we make sure that we can create a free life on that, we probably have to set a destination. And just imagine the destination is somewhere here. Really. Now, this is a graph. For the moment, it's not fully completed because we will use this during the talk. But on the left, we have results. Now, the graph is two parts, but let's start here. At the top, we have 5%. You probably know the saying, 5% of the people have 95% of the money in the world. Now, that's something you can do for anything in life. You have 5% of the people who are super healthy. You have 5% of the people who are super happy. You have 5% of the people who are the best relationships, whatever. Below, you have 15%, so that makes 20, and this made uh, 80 at the top, 30 and 50. Now, the good news is, if you are in this room, you certainly don't belong here. So, I would say you are up the 50%. Because if you were here, if you were here you will not make it to this room. For some reasons, I will explain later. Acres of diamonds. Everybody, anybody knows that story? Cool. Well, it's a story based on true facts. It's a book written by Russell Conwell in 1896 about a farmer who wants to find diamonds. 
in Africa. There was a rumor that in a certain area, there were fields who were very rich on diamonds. And one day, one farmer heard that rumor, because just remember, there was no WhatsApp, no Skype, no phone even, so based on rumors. And he thought, well, let's buy this farmland, I will sow my crops, and during the year, during the year I will take a shovel and try to find diamonds. Now, that's what he did. So he saw his crops, and when he had time, he took the shovel and started to dig for diamonds. End of the summer, no diamonds found. Now, there was also a little river flowing through the fields, and he was picking up rocks, and it's like, yeah, it's no diamond, also no diamond, also no diamond. So after a time, he said, I give up. But he found one rock, very special, took that. He had a, a house overlooking his farm with a porch. There was a table, and he put the stone he found on that table. And he said, there are diamonds here, let's sell the farm. That's what he did. Now, a second farmer, here the same story, in that sense, there's a land for sale, probably rich on diamonds. And he thought, let's buy that land and find the diamonds. Now, there was one difference with the first farmer. The second farmer had a friend who was a diamond expert. He bought the land, saw his crop, started to look for diamonds, but he didn't find one. So I would say he called the diamond expert, but in that time there were no phones, so it took time before the diamond expert came. And one day the diamond expert was there, and he started to look for diamonds. Now, they went boat walking through the fields, and the diamond expert didn't say a word. And the farmer was like, hey guy, come on, what's going on? The end of the day, the diamond expert didn't say a word. They came across the river, he looked at the rocks, returned to the porch, sitting down on the table, and the farmer was like, guy, you gonna say anything? The diamond expert said, the stone from the first farmer was still on the table, and he picked it up and he said, do you know what this is? The other farmer said, no. So, well, this is probably the biggest diamond ever found until then. So this is maybe the problem that most people don't know, that diamonds maybe look like this if you find them. They are not that polished, shining things we all know and should give today, oh shit, <laughs> to our loved ones. But maybe that's the thing. You don't know how the diamonds look. So you don't know where to look for, maybe. So what can we learn more from this story? To be honest, maybe most people give to up soon. How do I know that? Well, I would say daily people ask me on my Facebook page, like, can you help me out with something marketing related? I say, yeah read that book, watch that video, take that course, whatever. I'm so friendly, a few days later, I'm going to ask them, hey, how is it going? No answer. Hmm, what's going on? Some guys, yeah, I want to build a website, a web shop, blah, 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 what should I do? Okay, do this. One week after you check, he built a website. Wow. One week after you check again, hmm, nothing changed. Well, it could be on a holiday or so, you never know. One week after, check again, no change on the website. Send him a message, hey, what's going on? No reply. Hmm. And then I'm so curious, I go to their private page, and then you see, like, start working, or start working again at. So what happened? 
Well, even for my high coaching clients, we start projects, we try to launch something new, a webinar, a few people show up, one person even buys, and then they say, it's no success. Well, five people show up, one buys, 20 that's 20% conversion, I would say, that's great. No, I'm going to stop. Excuse me? No, I'm going to stop. Why? Well, it's nothing for me, I'm not worth it. No, I don't want to do it anymore. Okay. So, it's the same as in the story, the first farmer in Acres of Diamonds. They gave up too soon. The one thing, people are looking to what is the secret to success. Who doesn't want to know that? And there is a book even called The One Thing. Anybody ever read it? Okay, cool. It's a good book anyway. But I would say probably it's not one thing we have to do. There are probably multiple things we have to do. So, back to our graph. So, on the left we have results. And something else we see now is no destination. A clear destination. So maybe the results we have will depend on do we know what destination we want or we have no fucking clue. Now, another thing is, how do you play in life? Let's say the bottom 50% is in primary school. But as I told you, the great thing is you are not in the 50%, otherwise you would not be in this room. Because those people only play. And you all look serious people. 30% are graduate, graduate school. Well, we take it a bit more serious. For those who have ever done university, you probably know you have to do a bit more, have to study a bit more. But the ones here do reach mastery level. And that actually means you do whatever it takes, how long it takes. You do things over and 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 over again until you get it. Winter Olympics now, it means if you are there, you probably are here and you are doing whatever it takes to be a master in something. Okay, only, can, only one person can take the gold medal, but I guess we agree, they're all masters in the sports. Otherwise, you don't show up at the Olympics. What do you really want in your life? The farmers in the story of Acres of Diamonds what was their idea? If I ask you, what do you want in your life? What, was, what will be your answer? It's an assumption, but most people will say, I want to be healthy. I want to be happy. And if possible, I want to be rich. Yeah, okay, cool. Well, but could that be a problem? It's too vague, because what is healthy, what is happy, what is wealthy? I don't know. So maybe we need to be a bit more precise on what we actually want. Maybe we have to define the destination we want to go to very precisely. Because if we don't do that, the chances are we're never going to get it. Who likes to play a game? Oh no, not again. <laughs> Who likes to play a game? Okay, cool. It's an easy game. You can sit down, you don't have to do anything. Well, there's one thing you need to do, that is to close your eyes. Close your eyes. Yes, close your eyes. No worries. The room is safe, we will not take your cell phone, no worries, everything is fine. 
But I ask you the question again. What do you want in your life? <laughs> Just imagine if everything was possible, all the money in the world was there, all the time, all the people, all the resources were there. How would your life look? What would you see? What would you hear? What would you ta uh, taste? I don't know. It's your life. It's what you want. But I would say, whatever you see, hear, feel now, double it. Make it more beautiful, more alive. Make it Dolby Surround 4D, whatever. Because it's your life and you are in control. So I just wonder, how does it look? How does it feel? How does it sound? What do you hear? Okay, you may open your eyes again. Thank you. Meet Frank. Frank is a real estate office owner. He has seven people working for him. He has an established business. He is one of the best references in this area. And the start of 2015, we started to talk. Frank was looking for a solution to real-time visualize 3D, new-to-build projects online. And at that time, that what was what I was doing. And he came with a question, and he said, can you make an offer? And I said, no. Why? I knew he didn't paint the full picture to me. So we made a new, new appointment. And I asked him, tell me the full story. Because I feel you don't tell the full story. And he said, you're right. What I actually want to do is create a new platform to change the way new-to-build projects for uh, project developers are managed. All the information is flowing, uh, all the communication to sell the, the buildings and so on, because now it's a total mess. I want to change this. I said, OK, that's already a different story. But I still knew he was not telling the full story. So we had a new appointment. And I asked him, what do you want in your life? Well, Frank was just a young father, two kids, two and four years. Of course, that's a busy life. I can understand that. Yeah. And he loves to create music. So he told me, two years ago, I bought all the equipment to create a studio in my basement. But unfortunately, everything is still in boxes. I have no time. I don't create music anymore. Okay. Even though Frank has seven people in his office, he needs to be the first in, the last out, six days in a week. Otherwise, the whole thing collapses and everything goes wrong. So yeah, it's normal Frank has no time. But I still knew there was something else. So I asked him again, what do you really want in your life? And then he said, well, what I actually want to do is buy old farms and start like a commune. Sounds wrong, but <laughs> that's not the, the, the idea. But uh, a farm, a community with people who live there and make sure they are self-sufficient, self meaning grow their own crops, food, all the basic things they need. Not the old way, because it seems to be that our modern uh, technology, you can farm very efficient, very ecolog ecological. Sorry. So that's what he really wants to do. But that takes, of course, loads of money, loads of time. Well, the money is not a problem, but the time is. What we did with Frank, I will uh, tell you later. Now. There are a few things I want to 
break. That is the myth of passive income. Sure, we need to find a way that the money we earn is not depending on our time. True. But I mean, just go on the internet, look for how to set up passive income. I'm sure you find many solutions, many systems. They will tell you, hey, just buy my system and put this on your website, put a button there, promote this, Facebook or AdWords, whatever, and within one hour, you probably make your first sale, a thousand dollars or euros, whatever, and this will go on for the rest of your life. Really? Whoever tried that? Me. <laughs> I can, agree, uh, I can assure you it doesn't work. It only works for that guy who came up with the system and is at the top. But for all the rest, unfortunately, we'll, we will not be sitting down on the beach sipping our margaritas. Another thing, lifestyle businesses, laptop lifestyle business, freedom entrepreneurs, you probably have seen many ads about that. And then you see something like this. So you climb the mountain, and then you have to take your laptop and work on it by yourself. Okay. Or you go to these tropical beaches, and you have to bring your laptop, of course, working all by yourself. Is this what you want? No? Okay, let's talk at the end. <laughs> so, it's all about awareness. Now, if you start to learn something, personal development, you, write, uh, you read a book or watch some videos, you buy a course, you get new info, let's say something like this. And then you say, hey, I need to know more. So you buy the next course, you know, this kind of information. But of course, there is also a part you know, so you only get a smaller part, new info. Then you have to buy the next course. More info, but yeah, you already know this. So at the end, there is so much little new info to find. And your question is, how are we going to grow? How are we going to know more? Well, it's not about that. It's about how you're going to connect. Yeah, you bought all these courses. How you're going to connect all this info. How you're going to connect all these dots. That is what you need to do. Super. Sorry. It's about seeing the things you didn't see before. Whoever read a book two times? Something strange happens, no? It's like that the author change the wording in the book when the second time you read it, it's like, that was not here before. <laughs> what happened? Well, it's just because your mind processed the info, became more aware, and now you see something that was not there before. That's what's happening. That's your awareness. But there is always a next level to awareness. Unfortunately, that's life, I guess. We need to keep on growing. That's even nature. We need to go, keep on growing. We need to keep to raise our level of awareness if the goal is to build a business that will support our life. That's why we are here today. So, back to our graph. So, we have seen results probably depend on you have a destination set, huh? you know where you want to go, or it's very clear what you want to achieve. And on the right side, there is something else. There is awareness. No commitment. Full commitment. Well, I don't know how many people really signed up today. Not everybody is here, I understand. But the question is, well, there's always something that can happen, like Valentine's Day, okay? But the question is, people signed up and then don't show up. You do a webinar. Today, if you get 50% on the webinar, if it's a cold traffic thing, 
50%, then you're on the right track. But the question is, why do people sign up and then don't show up? Were they just interested in something? Or are they committed to something? You, are, you guys all showed up, so I would say you are committed to something. Bravo. What else? Well, the bottom 15% actually, if they have to do something, most of the time they don't do anything because, yeah, remember, they are in primary school, they only are playing. 30% here, they do something. Okay, if they have to do something, they do something. 15% here, they do a lot. But if you're up here, means you do whatever it takes. You're fully committed to reach your destination. You're fully committed to do whatever it takes. How hard it is, how difficult it is, how long it takes. So, what in the end makes the difference between, let's say, an unsuccessful person and a su successful person? Do you agree that, let's say, everybody in the room here has more or less the same education? We are lucky to live in a part of the world where we all can have education. So I would say we all have more or less the same level of education. Okay. Can we agree that all people in the room will have more or less the same average IQ level? 110, 120, average will be the same. Unsuccessful person, successful person. How much time has this person per day? Anybody? Four hours? <laughs> 24 hours, yes! Okay. Now, how much time has the successful person in a day? 24 hours. It's not that this person has 240 hours, 10 times more. No. Okay. Okay. Unsuccessful, successful. We just agreed everybody, everybody has more or less the same IQ level. Yeah? So let's say this person has 120. This person has no IQ level of 1,200. I guess it will be more or less the same. Education, same thing. So there must be something else that makes the difference. Well... Maybe we can sum up the differences here. So it's about awareness. It's knowing what actually makes the difference. And the first thing is maybe it's important to know why we do something. And it's maybe important to set our destination. Where do you want to go in your life? Where do you want to go in your business? Maybe that's the first thing we need to do. Resilience. Well, I'm here. I want to go there. Well, first thing I need to do is start walking, I guess. But what happens in business? Can you go in a straight line? Probably not. You will be beaten down, pushed around, shoved around, yelled at it. I don't know. But the question is, do you... Continue, or do you say, bye-bye? <laughs> well, your vision. Maybe it's important to have a vision once we are there, what we actually want to achieve. What is the difference you want to make in your life, in other people's life, in the world? Commitment. Well, after today, I could do a whole talk about commitment. Commitment only, but that's on a different story. But are you willing to do what it takes to get there? And I found out today many people are not. Your beliefs, your mindset on itself. If you believe, well, I'm not worth it, it's not for me, it will not work for me, I have always bad luck. Well, yeah, then it probably will be difficult. Perseverance, tenacity. 
Who was once a baby? I hope everybody was one. Okay, so at six months, they, try, they start to crawl. And what they want to do then? Yeah, like, <laughs> get up. Who ever saw a baby that tried to get up and did and never stood up again? Nobody? Okay. Well, next phase is the walking. Mommy, daddy, try to do a few steps. Yeah? One step. Whoever has seen a baby that never stood up again and tried to step again? I guess nobody. Who can ride a bike? Okay, cool. Whoever has seen a, seen a child that rides a bike, tried to ride the bike, and never biked again? I guess nobody. We all probably have some scars here and there. Huh? Now, something strange happened. In research, it's found that at the age of 20, uh, 80 to 20, we lose this. As a child, we have some uh, tenacity, the right word, Sam? Tenacity? Yeah. To whatever it takes, we're going to do it. Even in some people say no. Yeah? But at the age of 20, we actually lose that ability. Let's say somebody at the age of 30 wants to learn to ride the car. Go for less. But the first turn she takes, crash. What happens? She probably will never, or her, he or him, he or she, whatever, <laughs> never will try to ride the car again. So why, as a child, we have it, but once we are over about 20, we lose it? Well, we lose it if we give up. Every time you give up, once more you're getting older, you actually decrease your tenacity. So people who start something early in their life, we all have failures, but if you don't continue, probably the rest of your life, you will decrease your chances to keep continuing, keep trying. Now, that's 80%, that are the mindset parts. I know most people are very good at this part, doing something physical with their hands, their work on itself. But this part sometimes is a bit more difficult. Great news, because there means there is still 80% of potential left. So, Now, practical. Your plan. If I ask you, do you know what you want in your life? And you say yes. My question to you is, do you write it down? Most people will say, nope. As long as it's not written down, it's just a dream. If you want to turn it into reality, maybe it's time to turn it on paper, write it down on paper. Of course, we will need some strategies and systems to get there. That's what I will talk more. We need to focus on the goal, because if I want to go there and I look there, probably we go the wrong direction. Implementation. Well, it's all nice to make plans, ideas, putting on paper, writing out systems, create everything on paper, great. But then it's just paper. It means we probably need to do implementation. We need to start taking action. Accountability. Maybe it should be at the top for some people, <laughs> but even in the intro, Sam said, hey, you do so much, uh, you do more than you said. Well, Sam knows, but I do pay another coach just for accountability. I pay another coach just for accountability. And since I did that, I double, tripled whatever I do today. The only thing we do on Friday, we call maybe 10 minutes, maybe 10 minutes. 
and we agree on what I'm going to do the next week, minimum three items. So the next week, eh, the week after, we call, first question is, what did you do? What did you do this week? Did you complete the three tasks? Yes, okay, great. What's your plan for next week? Next three tasks, minimum. What will be challenges? What will be possible things that go wrong? Okay, can you uh, manage them? Yes, okay, that's the call. But just doing that, at least for me, double, tripled my outcome or my production. What is your commitment? If you want to build a business that will support your life, how committed are you to actually create it? Because as long as it's an idea, okay, I want to be there, but I don't have plans, then it's going to be very hard. You write the plans, great, but then still the question is, are you going to do the things that need to be done? Because I'm not here to tell you it's not going to be hard. I'm not here to tell you it's not going to take time. I'm not here to tell you it's not hard work to get there. But if you do it in X time frame, depends on how hard you work and what you have to solve, you actually can build a business that will support your life and a business where you can be free from. But if you still can are thinking about what is commitment, I would say, ask a gazelle what commitment is when a lion is chasing her. She probably knows what commitment is to try to get away alive from the, gaz uh, from the lion. Here's my question again. What do you really want in your life? That's up to you, not to me. So you just, we just did the exercise. I don't know what picture you painted, but still the question is, is this what you really want in your life? What do you really want in your life? And that's a question most people don't have an answer to. What did we get wrong? Well, probably, let me just take a sip. So, what did we get wrong? Well, how strange it may sound, probably we didn't set real life uh, rules for life. Probably we didn't set real rules for life. Maybe strange, but probably true. What those rules are, I don't know. You have to figure it out. We have some exercises for that, but... If you don't set rules, you don't set boundaries, what will happen? You probably know what will happen. So maybe that's something we have to do. We probably didn't set rules for our business. Hmm? Well, how many clients do you have you actually don't like? I know enough people who just take on any client just beneath because they need to pay the bill at the end of the month. But when they take the client, they actually know he's going to be a pain in the ass. He will ask changes over and over and over again. It will never be okay. And probably I already know he will not pay me or very late. But still they take on the client. Why? probably because they didn't set the rules on the business with what people I want to work, for example. Trading time for money. 
95% of the people in the world trade their time for money. If the goal is to build a business that supports our life, a business that we are not a slave to, a life where we want freedom in, well, as long as you trade time for money, that's not going to work. Because maybe you have noticed that trading time for money today is not the best way anymore to make money. 100 years ago, it was maybe a good way to do it, but today, not anymore. This one you probably didn't know yet. No customer journey. What's a customer journey? Well, some people uh, say that's my marketing. Well, the customer journey is not your marketing. In the end, marketing will be a part of the customer journey, but the customer journey is, well, something that your clients will experience with you. How are you going to treat your clients? How are you going to work with them? What service will you offer them? Because no customer journey means also you have actually no clue what the value of your client will be over time. No systems in your business. Eva, at the beginning, yeah, she started out her business in 2012 and she built a business quite fastly successful, but she always had the idea, nobody can do what I can do. I guess sometimes we all have that idea, but maybe that's not true. Frank, he has seven people in his office, but if he's he not, if, if he is not there, the whole thing collapses. Why? No system. Nobody knows what to do, what he expects, how to do, how to solve things. That's why we need systems. Try to do all by yourself. Eva, same story. She tried to do all by herself. And many solo entrepreneurs, self-employed people say, yeah, I have to do this because, yeah, then it's small, I can be cheap. But as long as you try to do it by yourself, you will never have a business that will support your life because the business will, support, uh, the business will only depend on you. What's the definition of a business owner? Well, someone who is able to or afford to hire somebody to help to do a job or your job. And I have so many people that will say, well, Peter, you have to understand, I'm now five years in business, but I cannot afford anybody, not even 10 hours a week, no. Shocker. If you cannot hire anybody to help you, you don't own a business. You still own a job. It's not from me, but from Scott Fritz from the 40-hour work week. Not to uh, help. <laughs> not to mix up with uh, Tim Ferriss, the 4-hour work week. That's what I meant. Do you have a plan? Well, it's a start to come here and listen to what I have to tell. But do you have actually a plan? If you really want to build a business, well, people will say you have to write a business plan. You have to create a financial plan. You have to create a marketing plan. That's all true. I'm not going to say that's not needed. But whoever told you, maybe you have to create a plan for your life. That's something most people forgot. They become successful and then they find out that, where is my life? 
because the only thing you're doing in life is work. Now, I work 12 years in aviation, and I'm now working like 12 years in the construction industry with my 3D business. So imagine we have aviation, we have construction world. Now, in aviation, we know they create plans, detailed procedures, checklists, emergency procedures, whatever you want to make sure we get to our destination safely. And, well, I don't say no accidents happen, but it's still the safest way to travel. Then we have the construction world. Well, we have an architect who creates plans, we have some people who create a schedule to do the work, but whoever built a house or did a renovation, well, sorry, Hilde. <laughs> uh, most of the time, it's too late, it costs way more, and schedules are screwed up. So just imagine that aviation industry would operate like the construction industry. Well, I would say we will have multiple crashes per day. Every hour on the news there would be crash somewhere, so many lives lost. I guess we would not accept that. Now, the story is not ended, because then we have small businesses. And then we wonder why 50% of the business who start today will not be here anymore in five years from now. Probably because there is no real plan, there is no real destination, there are no systems, try to do it all by ourselves. Aha, how are we going to fix it? Well, this is the framework I use. And the rest I will explain every part of it. But probably, well, we need to start out with a plan, <coughs> a written plan. If we want to build a business that supports our life, what's the first thing we probably need to do? Set our life rules, maybe? Maybe that's the first step we need to take. After we have done that, okay, then we can look what will be the business rules, how we operate the business. Now, next level, assets. If today you mainly trade time for money, you only have one source of income. Probably then it's a good idea to make sure we have multiple streams of income, multiple ways to get money. We call this from now on assets. Now, you can try to do it all by yourself, but if you really want to build a business you can become free from, you probably need a team, people that support you, and probably some tools, automation, and so on. And that, in the end, will result in money. That money can give you your leveraged life. That money can give you your free life. One of the questions is then, what's the time frame of our plan? What's the time frame to get to our destination? Well, I started, I started out to put uh, three years on that. Some people find that too long, others too short. So you may pick your time frame, but I would say three to five years, that will, will work for most people. So you may pick your time frame. So the first thing we need to do is, well, define our life rules, and we need to know where do you want to be in your life, let's say three to five years from now, what's your destination? Of course, people will say, yeah, but I don't have the money, I don't have the people, I don't know how to do this. No worries, there is a big red button. You press on that, everything is possible. All the money in the world, 
all the resources, all the people, all the time. And then we can find out, as we did in the exercise, what do you want in your life? What will be the rules in your life? What are the things you want to do? What are the things you don't want to do? The same for business. We need to set business rules. Same question, where you want to be in three to five years with your business? What do you want to achieve? Red button, everything is possible. What do you want? Money. I don't know how it's here in Poland, but in Belgium, it's a dirty word. But freedom costs money. Who agrees? Cool. Right, I don't have to explain that. Anyway, if you don't agree, well, just go back to the story of Eva or to the question, hey, you have to go for six months. Most solo entrepreneurs who only trade time for money, they don't take vacations. Why? Well, first of all, they don't have an income. The vacation costs money. And afterwards, they still have to do all the work. So I would say your freedom will cost money. Even the freedom is sitting down on the beach, drinking no cocktails. Even then, it will cost you money. Now, for me personally, it's not about money in the sense from a big house, the Porsche, the Ferrari, private yacht or plane. No, I would say for most of us, the freedom we want is to have experiences. That's up to you. I don't know what you prefer. But it could be, well, Today, you maybe see kids five minutes per day, but what do you want? Maybe, yeah, bring them to school in the morning, pick them up at four, play with them, homework, bedtime, bed story. Maybe you have no idea what you want to experience, but the question is, it's the last day on this planet. It's your last day you have to live. What would be your regrets if you keep your life as it is today? Or do you want to, on the last day of life, look back and say, it was a hell of a ride. Not easy, but I had so many great experiences. I made some decisions in my life that it was a choice to be, let's say, in the bottom 50% or try to move up a bit. And I choose the second one. And I guess my wife can agree with that, that it's sometimes I do crazy stuff. But at least I had all the experiences. And if it's my last day on this planet, I can look back and say, it was a fun ride. So the experience we want will cost us money. The freedom, the experience in the end will cost money. So money is important. You know, this may be from Rich Dad Poor Dad. Anybody read that book? Yeah. So we know the cash flow quadrant, left side, left, uh, right side. On the left, we have employees and self-employed people. That's for 95% of the population, and they have 5% of the money. What do they do? Trade time for money. On the right side, we have business owners and investors. They are 5% of the population, but do have the 95% of the money. What do they different? Well, first of all, yeah, they leverage the time of other people on the left side and generate money by that. Investors invest money, leverage the money, 
to earn more money. Great, but I would say maybe we need to be somewhere here in between. That's what I would call an entrepreneur. Somebody who builds assets that will leverage time and money, preferable other people's time and money. So we need to build systems because those systems we will need to generate the assets. Because it's nice if you build up uh, assets like Frank, the real estate owner, seven people. So you, you should say, hey, you should be able to cash money without working. But in the end, he needed to be six days in the office. Why? There were no, so, no systems to support the whole thing. So if we want to build assets, you want to leverage other people's time or your own time or money, if you don't have the systems for it, it's not going to work. So the framework, we are expanding on it, so we know we need to build different assets. And those, effort, as those different assets will need systems. Why we need the systems? Well, the people here actually need to know what they should do and how they should do it. Well, assets are explained. Let's say you inherit 500,000 euros. Well, some people will give you advice, put it on a savings account. I don't know what the interest rate is here in Poland, but in Belgium, well, from the interest after one year, you can go on a little holiday. That will be it. So I would say not the best investment. Some people will say you have to go to the stock market, buy stocks, funds. But you say, yeah, maybe that's too risky. Bitcoin, well, <laughs> that's another story. <laughs> uh, but in the end, you say, yeah, it's too risky. And 5% will be your average. OK, that's 25,000 euros. That's nice. Some people will say you have to go into real estate. Huh. But you think, yeah, I don't want to buy a thing or an existing thing. So your idea is I will buy a building plot and I'm going to build there a building, have four apartments in that so I can rent them out. Okay, so you buy the plot, you find an architect, he draws the plans to the commissioning. Uh, he find the contractors, they start to build, and maybe in two years from now, the building is ready. And you can start to rent out. For the next 40 to 60 years, depends how long you live, uh, you have to still have to have some uh, maintenance costs on it and so on. But if you take it well, in 15 years from now, everything is paid off and you make, I don't know, 2,000, 3,000 euros a month. If you're really smart, you did already reinvest it. And if you're really, 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 really smart, you take a loan. But that's another story. So we need to build business assets. And your question probably is what I need to do. Unfortunately, I cannot answer that question because it depends on the business you have today. It depends on the products and services you have today. Now, even if you trade time for money, it doesn't mean you're screwed. There are ways to make sure over time you can make the business depend less on yourself. What assets you need? Again, I don't know. But what did we do for Eva? Well, after the brain surgery, she realized, like, hmm, because she didn't know it would ever come back, yes or no. So she was like, okay, if it ever comes back, I need a backup plan. 
I need to make sure now it's only like two months out, but what if it's really six months or longer? Then my business will be gone if I continue like now. So we start to think. Well, the first thing we did is make sure that the business she has today as an interior architect is less dependent on her. So we started to hire some people. But that would only be one asset. We needed to find a second asset. She had an idea. And on itself was a great idea. But when we looked back to her life rules and business rules, the idea was not so good anymore. There were too much moving parts. There would be still too much time she had to put in, even if it was systemized. So we said, that's not what we're going to do. And we just parked the idea. Now, the start of 2017, my new office was ready, which was designed by Eva. Now, as we said, construction world, some things go wrong. So unfortunately, some things went wrong and it took longer and so on and so on. So after the office was finished, we had a meeting and we sat down. And for some reason, we both had the same idea. Why don't we create an app or a web solution to make sure this doesn't happen anymore? Make sure that, well, it's a project management tool, and you will say, hey, there are so many yet. OK, that's true. But most of them are very general. Most of them are focused from the solution on the project management. What we did is took it from the architect, from the designer, and look from there. So I hope in six months from now we can launch a SaaS solution, so software as a service. Well, we, um, we used this framework to create it. And in our rules, the first thing we actually wrote down is what is our exit route? It doesn't mean we will not do anything more in the business, but the first thing we did is how we can get out of it. So it doesn't depend on us anymore. So if you ask what assets I need to build, it depends on what problem you want to solve. <coughs> Hurry. So it depends on what you want to solve, where is your expertise? I don't know. You know. And this is probably the biggest challenge. It's something that will take time. That's also why I say, hey, that's I want to, want to go. But in that plan, I actually don't define yet where the money is coming from. That's the next step. So the biggest challenge is to find out what assets I need to set up. However, there is a way to make sure the business you have today will generate more money and will enable you to hire more people or be more free from it. And that is to create a customer journey, to create the best customer journey. Now, back to our framework. So, before we had three boxes assets, now let's look how we're going to develop one. And of course, the first thing you probably do when you think on a business asset would be what is a product or service? Yeah. But I don't know that's the best approach. If you have a business today, you're already solving a problem, I hope. The question is, has your customer only one problem? Most of the time, he has more than one, than one problem. So how can you help him more over time? If you develop a customer journey, that will become more clear how you can help him more. 
over time. So maybe the first thing you need to do is develop a customer journey. How are we going to do that? I will explain. But there is something very important on that. Because today you have maybe a product or a service. But I would say forget that product or service. And only think on the extra service you'll deliver. Because today, most products and services are becoming just commodities, and you can buy them on every website, on every corner of the street. Well, not true, but I mean, where can you make the difference? The only place you can make a difference today is how you provide a different service. How do you provide a different experience to your client? And that's maybe what you need to figure out. And then combine it, of course, with the products and service you already are delivering. So, how do you treat your best customer? If you have done a marketing plan, you probably have done a customer journey. You have defined an avatar. So you actually know who will be your ideal client. Of course, that's step one. Step two is, what is the best product or service I can offer him? It means also, what is the highest value I can offer him in a solution? So the customer journey needs to be developed from your ideal client, ideal product, project, or service. Once we know that, Okay, then we can continue building our customer journey. Your question is probably, where does the customer journey start? It probably starts very soon. It starts the first time people hear about you, see about you, read about you. So yes, that is marketing. That is true. Now, many people still rely on Word of mouth, referral, in some businesses, service businesses, that is still a big part of their marketing. Word of mouth is probably still one of the most powerful types of marketing. However, there is one big problem with that. You don't have any control over that. If it's just people to people, you don't have any control over that. It means today they tell something nice, tomorrow it's something not so nice. So how are we going to solve that? Well, if you're clever, you do great marketing, your marketing can solve that problem and still make sure word of mouth is your most powerful uh, marketing tool, but it's in your control. That's where we need to be. So where does it start? Well, yes, it starts with the marketing. Next one is the sales. And here's still room. But that's to illustrate something. Let's say you want to buy something new. You go to a shop. You have a sales guy there. And he's very gentle, nice, smiling. Nice talk, friendly. You sign the order, and then they say, yeah, you can pick it up there on the counter. And there is a person, yeah, what? Huh? So the nice customer journey suddenly ended. But it also means <laughs> probably everything behind here, if you have a problem, you go to the customer service, the experience is also a bit less nice. So for many businesses, if they have a kind of customer journey, it stops here. Well, maybe that's not so smart. Where does it end? I would say it should never end. It should never end. The customer journey we develop should never end. Why? Well, why? Today you solve one problem, but it would be nice if you can solve another problem tomorrow, 
and after that, and after that, and after that. Because once you have a client, he's probably trusting you. Probably means if you say, hey, I can help you with something else, he will say yes. You probably know that getting new clients is actually a costly business. It's way more cheaper to make sure the clients you have, you can offer them new products and services. So that's more efficient. Back to the framework. So we know marketing and sales. What are the other parts? Well, something needs to be delivered or produced. Best we include that also in the customer journey. After sales, so what do we do if people have a problem? But there is something even more important. Networking. And I don't mean going out, exchange business cards and have free beer. That's not what I mean. I mean is build a connection with your client. Well, actually you're building it hopefully already here. But if you have no real customer journey, it probably still will end somewhere here. So this means building a connection, building a long-lasting connection. In my 3D business, we only sell online. We only sell online. I operate in the Benelux, and there are 200, I must say 199, other people selling the same stuff as me. But the strange thing is, we sell more than all the other 199 guys. And every year when we have a resellers meeting, they still ask me, how do you do it? Because our business is only me and my wife. And the other hands have typical sales engineers, managers, guys who call, six people. I never called anybody. I hate calling. So what do I do? I create a connection, a personal connection, actually. Oops, wrong button. Here. I'm the face of the business. I make sure every step they take, they see me on a video, of course. I make sure they keep in contact with me. So once they are a customer, I make sure they get free stuff from me, free trainings for the software, and so on. And one day, they will probably follow a training. And I still keep giving me... Hello, Mike? Yeah? Okay. So I keep on giving value, and one day they probably buy another product we offer, or they buy another training we offer. So I make sure that I keep the connection alive with them. Sorry, again. I make sure I keep connecting with them. So whenever they need an extra license or have another problem, on who will they think? I will make sure I'm just at top of their mind. That's your customer journey, making sure you are also top of mind of them, always. Is your business a system? That's the first question I always ask when I start to work with my high-end coaching clients. Do you have a business, uh, sorry, do you have a system in your business? Some will say no. Some will say, in my head, great, but that's not a system. That's still a dream. A system is only a system when it's on paper. Other people can still not read our minds. Unfortunately, or maybe that's a good thing. So we need to develop systems. They need to be on paper so other people know how they should do something. Other people know what you expect. Other people know what the result needs to be. That are systems. It sounds complicated, but it's actually very easy. But it will take time, unfortunately. Now, I hope one day you want to retire. For some, it's close. For others, it's a bit longer. I don't know. 
but I hope one day we can retire. Who wants to retire and have a very nice time after that? You can do what you want, no worry monies. Um, worry monies, money worries. Okay? Just imagine, two, three years before you want to retire. Company number one, company number two. Company number one, solo entrepreneur. No system, doing everything by himself. Well, what is his plan? Probably has no plan because what is he going to sell? There is nothing to sell. Luckily, maybe there is a good website with some traffic. You can sell that, but he cannot sell the business because the business is him. Everything depends on him. Business number two, well, he used maybe my framework, so he has assets, systems, a team. He wants to retire, he can sell the business. He can step away and the business still run. Somebody can take it over, maybe one year support. But it's sellable. And why should we create something that can be sold? I don't know. You are, I don't know, you are counting on it, but I'm not counting on that the government will pay me some pension. Maybe in 20 years from now, they still do that. But if you want a worry-free all day with no money worries, I would not count on that. So I pick option number two, build a business, assets and systems, so one day, that can be sold. And it can be sold to hopefully a large amount because you probably need some money to retire. So selling that business is your retirement fund or a big part of that. Maybe you want to scale your business. You want to grow your business. You want to have more revenue. You want to earn more. But how are you going to do that without a system? How are you going to put more people to help you if there is no system? Nobody knows what to do. Nobody knows what you want, how you want it, and most of the times also what the actual result needs to be. So if you want to grow your business, you want to scale it, you will need to have systems. So why to create systems? I guess there are many reasons, if you want to sell it, if you want to come be free, if you want to scale it, then you need systems. Creating systems is actually easy. It's just sitting down, taking the time, and write down what needs to be done. Well, of course, there is a structure to do that better, but that's the only thing you actually need to do. So back to our framework, we know we probably need to set life rules, business rules. We have to create business assets, which are based on a customer journey, where we have marketing sales, production, after sales, networking. And for each of these, we need systems developed. Why? Because our team, our tools, eh, need to support us. So we need to build a team or at least people that can help us out. Now, some um, solo entrepreneurs, eh, when you say, hey, maybe you need somebody who can help you, hire you people, it's a costly business. I don't know how it's here in Poland, but in Belgium, it is a very costly business to hire people. But I didn't say you have to hire people. Today, there are so many other solutions. People all over the world, as a freelancer, or other solutions, who can help you. Most of them are specs, uh, most of them are experts in their field, they like to do what they do, and they are good at it, efficient at it. But I told you, my business is only me and my wife. That's not true, of course. We have nine freelancers working for us. And some of them even work for me almost 10 years. They like to work for me. For some reason, the reason is, well, I have a guy who develops uh, websites for me, 
and he does the same thing on Freelancer or any other uh, freelance uh, website. But he has so many requests like, I need a website. And how does it look? I don't know. You're the expert. What needs to do? I don't know. You're the expert. Just do. After two weeks, they develop the, the website, they show it, and what does the owner say? That's not what I want. I need to be different, looks different, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, nobody happy. If he needs to build a website for me, he has a system for that. I show him what I like to achieve, how it needs to look. I say, hey, most of the times I make a video. That's also a system. And he will say, yeah, it takes me two weeks. OK, in two weeks, we will see. After two weeks, if he has questions, he can ask. But after two weeks, he sent me the result. That's it. He sends me the invoice. That's it. And most of those guys like to work like this, because they only want to build websites, and they just need to know what they need to do, how it needs to look. So all the people that work for me, I give them my system. And most of them are so happy, because nobody else does that. So working for me is quite easy, I hope, in that sense. I give you my system, they know what to do. If they can do it, we don't need too much talking. Okay, some people will say, that's not a team. Well, maybe that's true, but at least it's support. And of course, probably we need some tools, email automation or other tools, to make sure we uh, support the team and are able to execute the systems. If you have a plan, great, but there was some steps. Eh? You need to take action. If you have the plan, you have to take action. That's the only way to get to our destination. Creating the plan will not be enough to go there. We actually need to take the steps. Of course, there is one more thing, the money. When people apply to work with me, uh, they, I have some questions, and one of the questions is, what's your revenue? Strange thing is, most people don't know. Most business owners don't know. They say, I need to check with my accountant. Great. And they only know, yeah, every three months I need to pay VAT, and at the end of the month, at uh, the end of the year, I need to pay some taxes. That's the only thing they know. And the accountant will only say, by the end of the year, you make too much profit, maybe you need to find a solution. But you, as a business owner, should know your numbers day by day. And the number you need to know is your cash flow. That's the number you have to monitor day by day. It's nice if your accountant say at the end of the year, hey, you have to pay uh, more taxes. But what if it's the other way, if you're heading for loss? If your accountant says you're heading for loss, probably it's too late. It's nice to make profit on paper, but there are so many businesses that fail because they run out of cash. So you, as a business owner, need to monitor your cash flow day by day. It's easy. You just have to do it. Now, there's another part to this. You developed new rules for your life. It probably means you will have a different lifestyle. You will have more freedom. You will have more experiences. Probably means you also need more money. The big question is then, the business you have today, does that support your new life? In most cases, that's not the truth. That is not true. So, we need to find out what do we need to change in the business so it will support our life, where most people adjust the life to fit the business. So it probably means we need to change the business model. Change of business model 
in the workshop we will do, I go over 31 different business models. So probably there is one that you can use or a combination of it. But what is a different business model? Well, probably it means you have to deliver your product or service in another way than you are doing it today. And another big difference will be how you're going to ask for the money. That's the other change you have to do. Because uh, me and Eva developing the project management tool, we could say, hey, you can buy a license for 500 euros. That's not what we're going to do. We're going to say, hey, it's 50 euros a month. So means yeah, we create monthly income. And the strange thing is, most people like to pay the 50 euros per month instead of one times 500 euros. Over time, it will cost more, but most people just like to pay monthly. So if you're going to build a different business, uh, you're going to build yeah, different business assets, you probably also need different business models. So the framework, your plan starts with your life rules. If we don't start there, we end up with the same problem as we started out now, having no freedom in our life. So that's the first thing we need to do. Then we have to set our business rules, mainly how we want to work, what I want to do, what I don't want to do, what clients I don't want, what clients I don't want. We have to set up a business assets based on the customer journey. That's the primary thing. What's the best customer journey you can offer? That consists of the marketing, sales, production, after sales, and don't forget that last part, because that is the most important part of all. That's the thing that will make you more money, because you deliver more value to your client. The more value you, live, the more value you deliver to your client probably means the more money you will get. All these need systems. Why? Well, we need a team that will support us and that in the end will result in more money and the end result is we have a leveraged life. That's for one asset. Step one, most cases, that means we take your current business and we transform it to something on a different business model that has a customer journey and doesn't depend that much anymore on your time. And then we're going to look over time what different business assets you will set up later. That's also why I said before we're going to reach the destination, it probably will take three to five years to do that. Do you want to use this framework in your business and create a leveraged life. Well, as Sam noted, well, I do a three-day workshop here in Warsaw. It's called the Leverage Life Business Workshop, where we will do or use the framework to create a business that will support your life. And do the 10,000 euro per hour work. Because if you don't have a system in your business, it means you do 10 euro hour work, 100 euros hour work. You always work in your business. What you need to do as a business owner is work on your business. Working on your business, that's the 1,000 to the 10,000 euro per hour work. So I do invite you to do the 10,000 euro hour work. But how committed are you? How committed are you? That's the question. Your question maybe then is, what will it cost me? Wrong question. The better question is, what is the investment? what will be the return? Because it is an investment. 
So let's say you give me one euro, I give you three euro, 33 back. Who would do that? I give, you give me one, I give you three, 32 back. What? Well, no, how many times? That's the next question. Well, wait. <laughs> Every minute, who knows? It's like Bitcoin lending. No. <laughs> so what's the investment for the workshop? The investment is 3,000 euros. But you have to see this as an asset. You do an investment in yourself. You do an investment in a better future. Just imagine, we did the exercise. What is the life you envisioned that you really want? Where do you want to spend your time? In your business? Or do you want to spend your time with your partner, friends, family, hobbies, sports? I don't know. Where do you want to spend your time in your new life? The investment is not 3,000 euros, because I want everybody to be able to do this, if you want a free life and a business that supports it. So the investment is 500 euros. That's a one-time offer, and there's a very good reason for that. It's no trickery, because there is a catch. Ah, <gasps> really? Yeah. So the question is, who is in? The catch is, it's tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the question, Sam. How committed are you? If you're really committed to build a business that will support your life, if you're really committed to make sure the business doesn't depend anymore on you, what is stopping you? What is stopping you? How big is your commitment to get to that destination, that other life? The only thing you have to do is come to me after we are finished and say yes, and we talk. And we'll see how it goes. Maybe you say, it's a bit too soon, I cannot leave the business. Well, I thought about that. Because the next workshop we will do, it will not be in Warsaw, but it will be in Brussels. And it will be the 24th to the 25th, 26th of May. Um, it will be in Brussels, very close to the airport, so it will be very easy to get there. There are two, three flights per day, Warsaw, Brussels, so it may not be a problem. What will be the investment? Well, I give you the chance, if you really want to do this, to still do it for 500 euros. But that's my timeline. So from the 1st of March, it will go to 1250, from the 1st of April to 1750, and it will end indeed at 3000 euros as an investment. So if you want to take the chance, if you want to build a business that supports your life. You are committed to that. Just come and talk to me. Because we are at the end. <sighs> Any questions? <laughs> Please. Any questions, please? When you mentioned about the word of mouth, yeah, and you mentioned that you, if you are smart, mm -hmm. then you can still control word of mouth. Practically, I was wondering can how you do that. Yeah, what uh, how you do th that? And the second thing, when you explain about rules and the systems, mm -hmm. and how detailed you are uh, writing your rules or uh, how detailed your system. Uh, are yeah it's only like you are a, uh, you did a good job with two people for instance is it that detail that tomorrow can if i buy this tomorrow can i run this without you or 
I, I was wondering how yeah. detailed. Okay. Thank so you. first question was more than one. <laughs> well, if you're smart, you make sure it's in your control. And the best way to do that is to make sure you have testimonial videos of your clients. Then, in your funnel or your customer journey, you make sure people see these videos. And then it's in your control. That's as simple as it is. That a question, uh, an answer to your question? Well, what, which part are not? This is one uh, method. Yeah. But imagine that they write and uh, on the post yeah. some you, other things. You cannot. Uh, well, if people write something bad on your Facebook page, yeah, the only thing you can do is delete it. Is it a review? You cannot delete it, unfortunately. That's true. But I mean, many people work or depend on word of mouth, but you just have to make sure you can take control. Testimonial videos would be a great way to do that. But yeah, you cannot stop people talking about you. That's not possible. Okay. Second question, how details need the systems to be? Well, um, I love simplicity. I run the business only on Google tools, uh, simple documents. And as I'm I worked 12 years in aviation, creating checklists for those who know something, but that's an inside joke. <laughs> it's the structure of an Airbus uh, uh, checklist. But um, you just sit down, try to think what are the big tasks, and from there, from there you start to detail and just write out what are the steps that need to be done. And depending on what you want to do, you have like a short checklist, like the most important points. So people know, ah, yeah, did I do X, Y, Z? So is it detailed? Depends on how much time or effort you want to put in. But I guess the most important thing is you create a system, you give it to somebody else, you let them read them, and then find out, do they understand it, yes or no? If they don't understand it, you probably have to go back and write some more. I with my freelancers, most of the time I create videos how something needs to be done. And that's more detailed than trying to write it out because they can see everything. So what I do, I give them the system, I say, hey, watch the video. If you have questions, come back. I give them a trial to do something. If it's fine, it's fine. That's it. Yeah? Actually, I had the same question about the years and how detailed it is. I run a startup that is now nine people, and it's like getting really complicated to make sure that people understand and follow, and then I still figure out yet how to do this, but you answered this question partially already. Okay. And the other one is, um, like, uh, you said you uh, run this uh, software company with your wife, right? We sell software. We we started out developing yourself, but we stopped that. And then you are the, developing this tool for a project management for, for yeah. construction industry, and then you give these lectures. So, uh, like, on how many legs you are, you know, basing your business, and overall, why like so many business different activities? You know where the question, uh, the answer is? Question, oh, the question, the answer is here. I knew I had to put the slide again at the back. The question, I'm saying the question. The answer, thank you. Your question was partially, hey, why do we have so many different types of businesses? Okay. Well, the question, oh, fine. <laughs> the answer, the answer is here. My customer journey starts with selling a simple 3D product. But it ends at or the SaaS solution. Most of my clients are architects, interior architects, designers. So most of them have to run some projects and have problem running them. So 
I talk about efficiency. The starter used 3D because that's efficient uh, compared to 2D drawings. Uh, 3D drawing has more details, it's easier to manage, has more info. So they are interested in doing efficient work. So next thing is how do they efficiently do a project? There I have a solution for them. So from the outside world, it actually looks strange. One day I do sell 3D software, next day I seem to sell a project management tool, and the next day I'm a business coach. From the outside world, it can look strange, but if you read my plans, my rules, and you see my customer journey, it takes totally sense, because I take him from one problem or one solution to the next, to the next, to the next. So you have to think all the different assets doesn't have to be in the same industry. Just look out, what else can you offer? That was one part. Uh, the other question, part of the question was? Yeah, the, the systems. Uh, well, coming back to why so many different industries or solutions, when I sat down with Eva about the ID, we took this framework, sorry, we took this framework, and it took us four hours to build a business. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but after that, we had our what we call big plan. It's a document, five, six pages, and that describes where we want to be and how we think we're going to get there. Now, I have a team of nine people, uh, web developers, system developers, marketing, uh, SEO, all the trades we need to launch a new business. So one of the parts in the plan is building the team, names, functions. Well, if I start something new today, it took me nine years to build a team, but it's a strong team now. So if I start a new business, I only have to fill my framework. And most of the cases, 99% of the positions are filled. So it's just a matter of putting everything into action. And in three months or six months, we have a new asset set up. That's the power of the framework I use. I can just use this over and over, and the more I use, the better it gets, and the faster it gets. Yeah? No questions, please? <laughs> I was afraid that question was coming. <laughs> what happened to Frank? Yeah. So when we started to work with Frank, the first thing we always do is how we systemize your current business. The first thing we always do. Means, let's create a system if there is no system. So, sit down with Frank, started to write. So, when he finished the systems, he hired an office manager. And started to implement all these systems until everybody well, you know, two people left because they were not complying or not willing to do the work according to the system. So that's the first thing we did. Took his business, systemized it, office manager, so he became free, more free, step by step of uh, the business. And yeah, now it's time to develop the next project. Yeah. More questions? There might be people wondering, because I am in the position of selling my time, and I feel already worried and I'm only starting out. Um, I'm attending your workshop. Would I leave after the three days with a workable plan to help me beyond only selling my time? That's a question I get many times, of course. Will this work for my business? Because today, it all depends on my time. I understand because one day I started out with the same thing. And 
In 2012, everything crashed that I had built up in the last eight years. And I started over from scratch, and I thought, let's do it a different way. So yes, of course, in the beginning, you have to do it all by yourself. That's normally, if we start something new, the first step is we do it ourselves. Last three months, I invested to make this talk, to create a workshop we are doing. Not that it's new, new, but I started from scratch over, make it better, make it better, make it better. So yes, now I did a lot of effort and time into this, but luckily my 3D business runs on itself. So for me, it's no problem to take three months off and do something like this. So yes, you start out, you have to do it all by yourself. And may I share what you... Sure. Yeah. Uh, Wanda wants to start a business to deliver personalized meditations. I try to meditate myself every day. You find on the internet, on YouTube, thousands of meditations. They are great. I even bought high-level meditation programs. They are great. But one day you still find there is some areas in your life that still doesn't work like you would, and some limiting beliefs or, yeah. So I met Wanda October on one of the courses, somebody else in Sam's uh, group did. And we started to talk and one day she said, hey, I need people to test out personalized meditations. And that's what we did. And every time I listen to the meditation, I get a smile on my face. Because, of course, these general meditations work, but what if you had, I'm doing a sales pitch for you. <laughs> oh, thank you for that. <laughs> but what if you have a personalized meditation that will work on the areas you want to work on. That's it's magical. I call it one of those magical meditations. But of course, if Wanda built it like her first idea, if I may say, then it totally depends on her. Maybe that's not a good thing if you think about, hey, I want to build a business that gives me freedom. So how can we solve that for Wanda? Well, one way to solve is, okay, you create general meditations who are parts are free and a part are to be paid. So that is a form of passive income. But over time, she has to build a reputation, of course, or some a network, over time, if you really want a personalized, if you really want a personalized meditation from Wanda, it probably will cost more. That's one of the ways to do it. Just make sure there are general personalized meditations, but if you really want Wanda, it will cost you more, because she has only so much time in a day. Customer journey is going to make the difference, I think. Yeah. So, yeah, you have to think about what is the customer journey, um, where they start, a free meditation. Yes, if they're more advanced, yeah, maybe you can do a small offer, a tryout. And, of course, one more thing is what if you have daily support in some way from a person like, hey, did you do your meditations today? Because the commitment here is also important. Only listening once to a meditation will not work. You have to do it over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Thank you. More questions? No. Then I wonder, <laughs> where is the pizza? Ah, <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> the pizza is coming. So, if no more questions, 
I'd like to thank you all for being here, being committed to be here, taking your time off on this special day. And I hope that one day, who knows, we can work to together. Thank you. To show up at a business training event on Valentine's Day is brave. And, <laughs> or, well, or both. But uh, it's, it's the hard work that needs to be done. And uh, it's been a privilege to watch Peter uh, put this presentation together. It's been a privilege to watch in our, in our group, uh, connections m made between Wanda and Peter. I've also used Wanda's personal meditation. Just got to give her a plug for that because it's really powerful when you do that. And um, I'm really excited about the next three days because uh, I'm going to try this workshop myself with two members of my business because this is not my strong suit. I'm a creative vision type person, not a details person. And I know that if I don't fix this, I'm never going to get uh, what Peter uh, is talking about, which is the freedom. We don't go into business to kill ourselves by working as long hours as I'm currently working. So uh, I look forward to spending time I don't have to create the time that I need. And if any of you can empathize with that or know what I'm talking about, then uh, I hope you do consider talking to Peter and joining joining us at the workshop. I'll be there personally with my team and Wanda, who's just a joy to work with and get to know. Maybe she'll help you with meditation and other people in the group. So I, I really could not encourage you enough to consider this, to speak to Peter, and uh, see if this will work for you over the next three days. And if it is, I look forward to hanging out with you and a, a very cool group at the Bristol Hotel. So... Again, one more uh, big round of applause for Peter for all the values. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. Thank you.